Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that we're going to hit on today is the ruling from a judge around a San Jose mandated insurance requirement. This is something we've covered a lot since February of 2022 when it was passed by the city ordinance. But this is important because everything that I'm about to show you not only has the potential for gun controllers to use it nationally, but it also conflicts with existing gun control arguments, which we've seen over and over and over again. And all of a sudden, it's perfectly fine to argue in court. Everything will be linked in the description box below. And I need you to send this one out because this is pivotal to us beating these people in the courts to use their own words and arguments against them. Now, of course, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. We would love to have you help us dispense freedom twice daily. And thank you so much for that consideration. And you know, guys, while we go into this, leave a comment, do something for me. Leave a comment down in, in the comments field. I wanna try a hypothesis that I got a tip on. Leave some emojis down there after your statements. I'm just curious. I can't tell you why, but if you could do that, I just wanna see on the back end to see if it actually does anything. But thank you for that consideration if you guys wanna play along with the hypothesis and kind of an experiment. But Let's get into this because we've got to talk about the San Jose gun insurance claim. Every lawsuit against it was just dismissed again and then it'll be refiled. It's a never ending game. However, I want to show you this because the gun controllers will look for this nationally. This is not something that's just localized. They use this as a breeding ground to push it nationally should it stand constitutional muster, air quotes. But that, speaking of that constitutional muster, listen to what the gun controllers and the judges actually agreed upon as a standard. Remember the whole militia thing? Remember that whole Second Amendment thing, insurance, all these historical analogs? Remember Bruin? Wait until I show you the way this meshes together. All right, so here's the court case that we're talking about. United States District Court, Northern District of California, San Jose Division. This is uh, NAGR versus the city of San Jose, okay? So this is important because while the court did dismiss it, I want to show you what the argument was from the gun controlling le legislative or excuse me, gun controlling uh, side of the argument in court. All right. So here's what we're actually dealing with. And I'll walk you through that. On February 8th, 2022, the city of San Jose City Council voted to approve the reduction of gun harm liability insurance requirement and gun harm reduction fee, the ordinance requiring San Jose gun owners to maintain gun liability insurance and pay a mandatory annual fee to a designated gun harm reduction nonprofit. This ordinance has been challenged by two sets of plaintiffs. One is the NGR and the other is the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Okay, we're gonna dive into the second amendment because this is where they actually place the claim. And this is where the arguments come out. Again, we need to use these against them when they bring them up again in the future because all of a sudden the militia is the people in this argument it's no longer the government mandated military service of which they would tell you is run by the governor. Remember that whole argument? Check this out. So here's the claim from the second amendment brought by NAGR. The first claim brought by NAGR plaintiffs alleges that the insurance requirement and fee provision both violate the second amendment. As to the insurance requirement, the city moves to dismiss the claim grounds under the Bruin framework. As to the fee provision, the city moves to dismiss the claim on ripeness grounds or in the alternative. Now here's the important piece. The reason the ripeness argument came up is because they haven't implemented it yet, because they know it's unconstitutional. When they implement it, it will be unconstitutional, but because it's not implemented yet, they put a pause on their own plan so they didn't actually put it into effect. The judge says, well, it's not in effect, so I can't rule on it. That's what the ripeness piece means. So they're lauding this as this huge victory. Well, no, they actually didn't employ any of the pieces here for the fines and the fees, because when they do, that's what's going to be smoked in the court. Anyway, let's keep going. But it's funny how they go, it's a huge victory. So here comes the militia part. Remember, as we go forward, every argument that we've seen from the gun control is a well-regulated, regulated militia, meaning that a regulation is imposed upon the militia. And after all, the militia was a part of the state government at the time. It was a part of the state military. So it's really not your right to have an assault weapon because the militia is controlled by the government and it's well-regulated. It's not the people. That's what they would tell you, right? Well, listen to this argument. The Second Amendment states, quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. U.S. Constitution Amendment 2. 
The court finds that the plain text of the Second Amendment does not cover the course of conduct at issue here. Quote, Choosing to keep and bear arms at home without the burden of ensuring liability for firearm-related accidents. But the court will also address whether the insurance requirement is consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. That's the Bruin decision. So listen to the mental gymnastics they do here. Again, remember that militia piece, because that's an important example that they're going to use as a historical tradition of a mandated insurance. Yep, here we go. This city has pointed to several historical analogs with varying degrees of similarity to the insurance requirement. Remember, they're struggling on Bruin to the historical analogs. That's what they've been they've been choking on. So this is what they're doing. This is what the Brady organization is doing, all right? As explained in the preliminary injunction order, the court finds that the mid-19th century surety statutes cited by the city and discussed at length in Bruin bear striking analogical resemblances to the insurance requirement. These statutes typically required certain individuals to post bond before carrying weapons in public if there was a, quote, reasonable cause to fear these individuals would cause injury or breach of the peace, with the bond forfeited if the wielder did in fact injure another or breach the peace. Now, the only problem is, this is not for someone who has a high potential for that. This is about everybody. You own a gun in San Jose, you're paying this fee. It's not about a bond if you were having a reasonable cause to fear incident. That's a bit of a problem, but they completely glossed over that. But now, let me take you to the next one. This is where the militia ties in. Listen to this. Again, remember, according to the left, the militia is a state-run organization. It is not the people. It is run and mandated by the government or the state government or the governor at this point. Okay? Now, here we go. Noting that militia commanders whose soldiers fire, quote, guns in and near the highways on days of military musters are legally responsible for all damage sustained by a citizen in consequence of such neglect. Strict liability for gun accidents eventually transitioned to a negligence standard in the mid-1800s, which in turn gave rise to liability insurance to, quote, insure against the consequences of negligence. This is the Brady Group commenting on the transition of firearm strict liability to negligence. However, quote, whether the standard was strict liability or negligence, the nation nonetheless maintained a historical tradition of shifting the cost of firearm accidents from the victims to the owners of the implicated firearms. Okay, so if you've got a military muster and it's a militia, that implies that it's a government or an individual group of citizens because are you you saying that the government was sued or are you saying the individuals were sued? Because what that says right there is those individuals who were responsible were then held to account. But I thought that the militia was a government state, so why isn't the governor's, government state getting sued? I don't understand. Why is it any different than the military? If your argument is the militia is a state-funded organization that is military in nature and controlled by the state government, then why is the military and the militia not held to the same standard, but this is okay to have insurance against individuals. You see where it falls apart? You've got mandated individuals who are guaranteed or reasonable cause to cause harm. The militia is a good example of that according to this lawsuit, and they can be sued individually. However, on the other side, it's a government organization, and now the government can't be sued, but the government can be sued. These things conflict like this. It's very similar to when they argue for historical analogs for gun control in existing court cases in Texas where they use discrimination based on religion and race. They actually use that. The state governments and the, or excuse me, the federal government actually use that as an example of gun control analogs. You can't make this up. Anyway, that's what we got going on in San Jose for the insurance mandates. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I will see you on the next one. I'm Brayden. See you later.